hello welcome to avoid tv thank you for stopping by my channel to watch my videos if you're new to my channel please hit the subscribe button so that you'll be alerted whenever i drop a new video but if you've been coming here and you have never subscribed please subscribe all right all right guys uh today i'm going to talk about uh, uh the dv 2022 we are almost ending okay uh remember that september 30th is the last day for any uh, visa adjudication to happen um they will not approve any visa after september 30th for dv 2022 so you want to make sure that you get your interview uh before or on september 30th any day after that they're not going to uh, issue any more visas so i came here to give you a quick update to remind you of a couple of things to do as we approach the end all right so um uh, so we're we will still get more interview appointments that is your second notification letters we're still going to get more um and some people have been asking me and i've seen it on some platforms that uh people are asking oh there'll be no more uh interview appointment letters uh guys that is not true there'll be more appointment letters i remember uh last year on september 2nd i remember somebody receiving a second notification letter and that is somebody that i can definitely point to and i'm sure there were others there so know that as we approach september 30th the time for you to prepare and your interview date will be very short okay as we approach the end the time that you have to get your stuff together prepare get your medicals done get everything done and go for your interview will be shorter okay some people may have uh three weeks or two weeks or even less so i want to remind you of these things okay um please know that because the time period is short and visas cannot be issued after september 30th you want to make sure that you are not putting yourself and your family at a disadvantage if you get interview appointment okay that means that before you go for your interview you must make sure that you are taking all the documents that are required guys i cannot emphasize this enough i've said this in other videos but i'm going to stress this again please make sure that you are taking every document that will help your case that will be required for your case i'm seeing that some people are asking what are the checklist of documents that i need to submit to this uh, uh, for interview in this place and that guys there are standard documents that you need to take to your interviews but some of you may have a very unique situations that you may have to add additional documents if you ask a general question what are the documents that are required for interviews in Lomi? what are the general documents required for interview in um freetown what are the general documents required to go for interview in nairobi people will give you the standard documents list okay but some of you may have a very unique situation that might not apply to everybody so don't just look at the basic documents that are required for that embassy but you also must look at your unique situation remember that everything that is unique to you uh a situation that may not be common for everybody you must bring evidence to support that okay like let's say uh you your eligibility is based on one of your parents uh, or eligibility is based on your spouse um eligibility is based on your occupation uh you're going to an interview uh, uh to an embassy that requires affidavit of support you have adopted one of your children um it, it, it could be various reasons you have been deported from america before you have been refused visa before these are unique situations that may not apply to everybody so when you're asking people oh what are my the documents for interview and stuff sometimes they will just tell you the standard documents but because they don't know your unique situation they know they don't know that you have gone to the embassy before and have been refused visa they don't know that you have been deported from america they don't know that you have an overstay in america okay so some of these unique situations will require extra documents that may 
that may not be the normal for everybody so just make sure that you are taking the documents that are required and that may be applicable to your situation okay i've stressed this because the reason why this is very important is that when you go for your interview and you miss a document and tell you to go and bring it back nothing can guarantee that when you submit the document that you didn't bring to interview nothing can guarantee that the embassy will review that document before september 30th you have a very short and limited deadline so you want to make sure that you are not creating extra scenarios where uh a uh, longer processing time longer adjudication time is going to take place or you end up in administrative processing you don't want to do that okay so that is why i'm insisting make sure that you're taking your documents the next uh point is get your medicals done get your medicals done the moment you you get your net second notification letter or the moment you see that your case is in transit to the embassy please start planning for your medicals either call to book appointment or get your stuff together and go do your medicals because oftentimes a lot of the embassies want you to have your medicals at least two weeks to your interview day but this is a situation where some of you may not even have that two weeks okay so you want to make sure that you get your your medicals done in a timely manner so that when you go for your interview your medical will not still be you know pending processing at the hospital or the clinic okay you want your medicals to be at the embassy on the day that you go for your interview because if the embassy says that we are waiting for your medical report we haven't received it that is outside of your control there is not much you can do and that can cause you to push through the september 30th and go beyond and you will miss your opportunity even though it may not be entirely your fault okay something not being your fault doesn't mean that you might not suffer the consequences okay so make sure that your medicals you are doing it ahead of time so that by the time you go for the interview it is there I've also made mention of this in other in, uh, other videos that when you do your medical before you go for your interview, call the medical facility and ask them if they have sent your report. You can also ask them when they sent it, okay? You must ask them when they sent your medical report to the embassy. Get that date, okay? Sometimes you have to be persuasive and talk to people so that they can give you that information don't go and be screaming at people if you scream you are not going to get the information that you need but be persuasive humble humility and let people give you that information when did you submit my uh, uh please oh madam please oh sir please oh boss i know in ghana we use those terms and i'm sure in other countries do you do that oh boss right in Ghana, when somebody wants favor from you, they start calling you those names, right? Oh, madam. Oh, boss. Please, oh, when did you guys send my medical uh, report to the embassy? Please, I just want the date, okay? I just want the date. So that when I go and they ask me, I can tell them that you sent it this way, right? Get that information. Just in case, this is like a backup. Remember, like, guys, this is like an insurance for yourself. So that when you go and they tell you that we don't have your medical uh, report it was like actually i called a medical place before my interview date and i was informed by them that they submitted my medical report uh through e-medical on this date please can you make sure uh, uh can you verify this for me can you make sure that you guys have it or you don't have, because they said they sent it on this day okay because sometimes the embassy will tell you we don't have it the, the hospital will, will tell you that they sent it and when you leave the embassy you may not have that power much power to you know leverage you may not have much power to you know uh push for them to look to see if they have your medical report so please make sure that um you're doing your medicals on time 
um call uh, the medical place to find out when they sent your report get a date and when you go for the interview and it comes up that they haven't received it please let the medic the, the consul officer know that uh, i actually called the medical uh place and they told me that my report was sent on this day if you have the time it's even better all right so that you don't just leave the embassy and then come and fight from the outside right because when you're uh when you're fighting for something with the embassy right like you're trying to advocate for yourself when you are in the embassy it is easier than when you're outside because when you're outside you send an email and then you get automated response for you know whatever you know and your actual question may not be addressed so whilst you are at the embassy you want to advocate for yourself all right so that is why it is important that you get that information so that you can properly advocate for yourself you cannot say that hey i did my medicals a long time ago so they should have sent it but you don't have any information to support that they have sent it right so if they tell you the date then at least you can use that to you know kind of uh uh convince the ceo to maybe have a second look to see if your information is actually there all right um the and then the last thing the last thing and i'm sure there are a lot of things that you could do to help yourself but these are just few things that I, i'm talking about and then the last thing uh like i said when i started before i said make sure you don't leave any document any important document don't leave them outside and then the last thing that i would say that make sure that all of your documents are up to date okay uh your documents for that country are up to date so let's say you're going for interview in freetown you're going for interview in accra you're going for interview in lomi you're going for interview in nairobi and you have the police report for that country if you're going for interview in Lagos, if you're going for interview in Ashgabat, um, if you're going for interview in um, um, Yerevan, if you're going for interview in Yaounde, make sure that the police certificate or the police report or police clearance of that country is still valid. The place that you're going for, if you're going for interview in Guangzhou uh, in China, make sure Ho Chi Minh City, uh, wherever you're going for your interview, make sure that the police certificate for that country is still valid. There is no problem if it is expired for a country that you have lived there before. Please, if you don't understand this, go and watch the video about the police report. But if you got a police uh, certificate from your previous country, a place that you were there, a country that you lived in, that you were required to get a police certificate from, that police certificate is valid for two years, regardless of the expiration date on that police certificate. But the police certificate from the country that you are attending interview in, let's say you're going for interview in Lagos and you are required to get police certificate there. Let's say the, the U.S. Embassy in Lagos says you should get police certificate there. If you're going for interview in to, uh, Lome and they tell you to get police certificate there, make sure that that police certificate that you're presenting in that country to the embassy is valid okay um and make sure that if your passport is almost expiring please get your passport renewed get your passport renewed bring your old passport and your new passport um and then and then another important thing all right <laughs> i was going to end here another important thing is that uh those of you who um apply for the lottery without your passport or your passport have expired if you when you're going for the interview this is my recommendation you don't have to do this but for me if i were in your shoes i would do this because remember you have spent a lot of money by the time you get to the interview you would have spent money this is once in a lifetime opportunity so you want to make sure that you are double checking everything if you are, your passport is expired, you can bring the old one and the new one to the interview. Even though the passport requirement had been revoked and removed for those who did the DV 2023, DV 2022, DV 2021, DV 2020. We don't want any CEO making a mistake about that. And then they don't listen to you. They don't hear you about this. So if I were you, when you're going for the interview, if you're somebody who didn't use a valid passport, for the DV lottery application if you're um 
if you didn't use a valid passport if you use other reasons other than using a passport for your dv lottery then please when you're going if i were you i will print out the court case i will print out the fm um which is the foreign affairs manual uh where it states that the passport requirement has been removed for dv 2020 21 22 2023 if I were you, when I'm going for the interview, I will print that document and add to my stuff and go. So that just in case a CEO is mistaken about that requirement or a CEO is not aware of this requirement or a CEO probably might be new and tries to deny you the visa based on your passport, you have this letter to show him that please or show her that please look at this. It says in the foreign affairs manual that the passport requirement will not be used to refuse me even if i use the wrong passport even if i use invalid password even if i said that i didn't need a passport this is something that you can use to help your case like i said this is not required but you know for me i always want to cross my t's and dot my i's so take go and print this this is not a heavy document you don't have to carry on your head you don't have to carry on your shoulder just add it just in case because i've seen some people share uh, screenshots of some uh somebody who went for interview and there was the person was refused because of the passport requirement i don't know how long ago that uh, screenshot was because you know social media people will pass some things around and maybe it might be an old refuser or it might be a new one i cannot tell but I'm just saying, just for a backup, if you use an invalid passport, if you use uh, wrong information from a passport, your passport was, was expired, um, some, if you cannot show the password that you use for the application, please add this information. Uh, that says that the password requirement is no longer required. Don't go ahead and take a screenshot of my YouTube video because that will not be an official information that the CEO will use. I'm saying that go to the FM uh the foreign affairs manual there's por a portion of the rule that is stated there that the passport requirement will not be used to refuse you visa if you're dv 2022 2020 2021 and i think 2020 but print that uh, doc uh that page and take with you to the interview in case the ceo mistakenly overzealously use the passport requirement to refuse you visa even though they shouldn't okay but guys, these are all the things that I wanted to talk to you about. But please report to your appointment on time. Don't be late. Don't miss your appointment. If you miss your appointment, ha, wahala for you. If you're not able to make your appointment, ha, wahala for you because they might not be they might not accommodate you for another scheduling okay so show up to your appointment be there on time bring all the documents make sure your documents are not expired especially police certificate for the town or the country that you are attending interview in and uh call to verify or confirm that your medical report has been sent to the embassy and i wish you the best of luck don't give up okay People, there will be interviews even on September 30th. So don't give up. We only give up after September 30th if you're DV 2022. Okay? But I hope that if you're not DV 2022, you're DV 2023, you're also watching and learning, uh, you know, and taking cues and advice from this to make sure that something horrible doesn't happen to you. Okay? But guys, I love you so much. If this is your first time on my channel, please subscribe. If you have been coming and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? All right? Subscribe. But guys, of everything that I've talked to you about today, I've shared with you, if you need a personal one-on-one -on -one time with me, you have to book an appointment. You have to submit, send a request through email, um, uh, wafoytv at gmail.com. Send a request through email. Let me know what you want an appointment about so that I can uh, dedicate some time to you and go over things with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that uh, everything is in order. Um, you've put everything together and you're ready to go. All right? so take advantage of this book an appointment so that we can go over things make sure everything is you know all put together and you're ready to go we don't want any unnecessary ap okay we don't want any unnecessary ap uh, follow me on facebook uh, you can subscribe on facebook now you can send stars now right guys 
if you are enjoying my video you are getting help from my video guys i you should also consider supporting my platform so that i can continue to grow i can continue to you know uh produce more interactive and amazing video work on more research and putting out there a lot of content okay share my videos with your friends and families so that they can also know more about the process and not fall victim to anybody okay for me i'll give it to you straightforward no dancing around things i'll just tell you the way it is all right but if you want to be part of the WhatsApp group for the uh, DV winners, uh, then you must send me proof your letter. The letter that says that congratulations, you have been selected. If you don't send me now, I cannot add you to the WhatsApp group because it is for winners only. If you are not a winner, you want to be part of a group, join my Greek Art Lottery Africa, Greek Art Lottery Ghana. Uh, moving to America Cycle 40 TV. They are on Facebook. You can join those groups. Um, but guys, thank you so much for sticking around and watching my videos. I love you and I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye.